What's something you know but you really shouldn't? My grandfather got drunk and told me his wife, not my biological grandmother, is a freak and likes it in every hole. He's in his 90s, she's in her 70s. Thanks grandpa, congrats on the happiness. I'll be over here now. He writes letters to his wife like a WWI soldier. Dear Harriet, it's been 143 days now. The noise never stops, regardless of the time of day. We hear the moans and grunts from the others around me. I try to get sleep in when I can, but often I am called to action when I least expect it. We lost four men yesterday but morale is still high for now. I hope to be finished soon, but no one can tell how long this will last. Pray for me, and hopefully I will see you soon. Yours truly Gerald. Sucks, doesn't it? Our sex secretary wasn't married, though but she did get pregnant. The whole office knew and could barely make eye contact with his mother-in-law office manager or wife plus three kids when they came to visit. Sex secretary was her word for it. Me and one other worker found her ad on Craigslist when they still had personals. She was trying to maintain the lifestyle after she quit with the $50,000 severance to keep quiet. My parents were swingers lol. I found this out when I still lived at home. They have gone out the night prior, and once I woke up the morning after that, I got a phone call in which had me needing to ask my mom a question. Well, she was still in her bedroom, asleep, but I figured since it was important, I'll just go wake her to ask. I walk into their bedroom and I walk over to her usual side of the bed. So. I began trying to wake her by tapping her arm. All of a sudden, what I thought was her started to move around and I could see her face. Face was covered with a blanket, and she was on her side, facing away from me. So once I was able to see her face, that's when I noticed that it wasn't my mom at all, it was another woman. Then that's when it started to come together. I look over the whole bed and realize that my mom was actually in the middle of the bed, my dad on the far side, and this woman on the other side, where I'm standing. That's the beginning of finding out my parents were swingers. Lol. I was shocked and mortified, and so so confused. Yeah, as others have said, this sounds like a sweetheart scam pretend to be in love with her and door sex so that they can have an emergency and ask for money. People have lost over $100,000 to this sort of thing, and once you start giving money you're too embarrassed to ask for help. Up, listen to what this person is saying. These romance scams are very effective and more common than you think. Scammers will specifically hunt for lonely old people, who often have dementia or are not mentally sound and groom them for months before asking for a dollar for a plane ticket so they can come visit etc. Please keep a close eye on your mother. That my uncle didn't die in an accident, he blew his brains out. My mom is a bit of a sitcom ask idiot who thinks if the door is closed we can't hear her talking in a normal voice on the other side five feet away. Heard her on the phone talking to other relatives about what happened. On a similar note, my best friend's growing up, his parents divorced after him and his brother turned 18. He died in a motorcycle accident. What had happened was the guy wanted to get back together. He was bipolar, drinking heavily and doing coke, started hanging out with bike clubs after the divorce also. He was telling his ex he was suicidal. She convinced him to come over. He ended up going under the tire of a semi in a turnaround. Word coincidence that he wanted to die, and just so happened to have a fatal accident right after saying that. She confided in me that she 100% believed it was intentional, as he died instantly. On a side note, it's fucked up to involve anyone in your suicide. That poor truck driver, when the driver got out to help and call an ambulance while freaking the fuck out, someone hopped in his cab and stole all his stuff. The old friend doesn't know the circumstances surrounding his dad's death like I do, and his mom swore me not to tell. It puts you in the hardest position ever. I knew my sister-in-law was raped, 
I found her after it happened and she made me swear not to tell anyone. I immediately called her sister and told her because this chick needed to go to the drive. She had been a virgin and was bleeding really badly. She made me swear to at least not tell my husband. The secret stayed between 10 of us. It haunted me for weeks. Not only that, but her sister knew and told my husband. It caused a huge blowout fight between us. FF to last year. I'm talking to the pastora from our church. She's the aunt of the guy my sale is engaged to. She had broken off their engagement after her ordeal because she felt dirty. Eventually they resumed their courtship because he said it didn't change his opinion of her. The pastor then says something like, I'm so glad my nephew was able to look past. CLS. Transgression. I was so pissed. Like our UFR calling her being raped a transgression? That's when I found out the for real truth. Sil was having an affair with a married man, and she took advantage of one night when no one was going to be home. It was just my seven-month pregnant self, my three-year-old, and her that night. She snuck the guy into the house. Then afterwards she felt so guilty she cried rape when I found her in her room with bloody sheets. She continued to feel guilty so she confesses the truth to her sister, who told the pastora, and years later, the pastora told me, then she swore me to secrecy, but fuck that, this time I told my husband right away, and to this day, my sil didn't know that we know, to be honest, I can live with that, because at least this time, I'm not hiding it from my husband. Same thing happened in my family, except it was my great grandmother that told us and it wasn't because she was lying, it was because she refused to accept the truth. My biological great-grandfather fought in World War II. According to others in the family, he was a completely different man when he came back. He went from being sociable and friendly to being withdrawn and quiet. Sometime after he came back, my great-grandmother used to tell us he accidentally killed himself with his shotgun while he was cleaning it. We accepted that as children. But you know dot 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 you get older. He was former US Army and trained with firearms, and he shot himself in the head with a breech-loading hunting shotgun. There's no way that was an accident. I think she just couldn't accept that he wanted to die, especially since doing so left her to raise both of their children alone. I've already written a little bit about how I found out the whole truth. My stepfather and I were constantly fighting, even when I still considered him my father. He often beat me, could punish me, just because he was in a bad mood, and so on. Once, when I was 10, he said in a rage that he has been raising me since he met my mother. Everyone quickly forgot about this phrase, and I just pretended that I didn't notice anything. But after that I began to suspect something for the first time. I began to have memories that in my early childhood I had another surname that does not belong to any of my relatives. Then I accidentally found printed photos in the pantry, where I was still very young, and my stepfather was not on them. But there was some strange man, by the age of 13. I finally proved myself as a genius of deduction and managed to put two and two together. I must say that outwardly I am an exact copy of my mother, we can easily be confused, and I don't look a bit like my stepfather or my father. Besides, I've always hated my stepfather and never considered him a part of my family, so for a while I doubted if I was wishful thinking. What if I just want to have a reason to cut him out of my life? So I asked my aunt directly about it. We don't have a very big age difference. She was 12 when I was born. We were always very friendly and I trusted her 1000%. She confirmed my guesses, thanks to her. I found my father on the Russian equivalent of Facebook. We slowly began to correspond, although it was terribly awkward and we were both scared and just didn't understand what we needed to talk about at all. But over time, we started chatting on the phone, then occasionally meeting and walking. By that time, my younger brother was born, so no one really cared what I was doing. But if my mother asked, I answered that I was going to a friend's house or to the cinema. And when I turned 17, 
I went to university and moved into a separate apartment, and then got married altogether, so my mother stopped controlling my life in any way. Dad and I started communicating like the most ordinary relatives. Over the years, it turned out that he and I have a lot of common interests, even to the point that we have the same favorite movie, and everyone in my family loves cats, except me and him. We prefer dogs. In recent years, we have been celebrating the new year together. In Russia, Christmas is not particularly celebrated. New Year is the most important holiday. Dad's new wife is one of my best friends, and I am looking forward to having a little sister. She will be younger than me by more than 23 years. I'm happy that everything turned out that way. So here it is. Mom and I have been lying to each other every day for the last 10 years, even though we both know the truth. I don't keep in touch with my stepfather, but Mom thinks it's because I'm still offended by the way he treated me. I don't even know if this will ever change or not. My old boss told me about her ex-husband's death. Him and his best friend died in a house fire. His kids were told that he died in his sleep due to the smoke. She told me that's not what happened. They found his body inside the closet of his room. In his last moments he had been trying to claw the drywall to get out. The me said he didn't have enough smoke in his lungs to have died from it. They believe based on the state of his body inside the closet that the fire got so hot around in the other rooms he cooked alive. They said that his lungs were filled with fluid consistent with the air being so hot they were burning inside and he drowned. To this day his kids have no idea he died an agonizing death. My then girlfriend got me a birthday present one year. Old photos of me at various stages of life from when I was born to just recently. I looked at it, said thanks honey and went to unwrap the next present. She looks at me for a second then asks well, well what? Look at it again. So I looked at the collage again and that's when I noticed some of the photos have a word each under them. Will. You. Mary. Me? My wife proposed to me and I totally missed it. For the record we've been married now for 11 years. This is super sweet and wholesome. I knew my husband was going to propose to me, just didn't know when. And he did a sneaky thing by leaving the ring box at home and just bringing the ring in his pocket, in a Ziploc bag. I thought I'd be able to see the box and know what was about to happen. So it was still a surprise and I have nothing I would have changed about the proposal. If you think she'll hate it that you knew at all then maybe you could bring it up ahead of time like the other commenter suggested. But if you think you can still be surprised to some degree and she'll be happy with that then you could just stay quiet and let her have her fun. My mom got romance scammed for $300,000. I had moved out and she turned my bedroom into her office. I had stuff still in the room and checked on top of the dresser. There was a printed form of FBI report that she had filled out which stated she got scammed for the mentioned amount. I confronted her about it and she told me she went into debt to give that scammed money. She told me they were caught in Italy but the money was not recoverable. My uncle really got around and I had three cousins in my class with him as their dad. Only the son was legitimate, with an older brother and the parents still together. The other two girls didn't know about their dad until their teenage years. When I was like five or six my mom told me that my best friend is actually my cousin, but I can't tell her or anyone else. If I told anyone, my entire family would be mad at me, especially the legitimate son, his brother and parents. It was pretty awkward when they found out that their siblings go to the same small school and never knew we called her. Around 8th grade their parents told them. In the early 2000s, my mother was incredibly sick. For the first handful of years of my life she was mostly bad ridden. Although she eventually got better in the mid-2000s. One day when I was like 8 though, I was rummaging through her closet and happened upon an older notebook. A diary of sorts. I cracked it open to find page after page describing the pain she was in due to her illness and how she really just wanted to die because it was so bad. 
She wrote about how much she loved her kids and how she thought it might be better to pass away to have her dad remarry so we would have a better mother. It was almost like a suicide note at parts. In the end, I put the book down and tried to forget about it but never did. She is still around to this day though, and for that I'm eternally grateful. When my wife gave birth, the room seemed unusually warm, warm enough to where I thought I may vomit or faint, but maybe I was having nerves from pending fatherhood. After the doctor handling the delivery cussed out the attending nurses beside the nursery, because the room temperature was at 89 when it should have been around the mid-60s. I walked out from the nursery after hearing most of what was being said on the sentence. If the mother or a baby ends up with an infection or worse, they are going to own this fucking hospital because of your fuck up. I ended up looking at them and said, that's good to know. Since my wife and kids are fine, I won't know the pleasure of owning a hospital. But I don't have to know the pain of medical malpractice. I've lived here in Humbo for 17 years now. Several close friends are long-time outlaw growers, others are long-time sheriff's deputies, and a ton of people in the middle game over the years. A couple of frits are now fully legal growers with national brands. I, of course, have never done anything illegal. Perish the thought. Couldn't get past the bullshit sensationalism on that show. It's like if someone did a documentary about Josiah Lawson and presented it as Arcata is a town inhabited only by racist murderers running wild. I told my aunt she shouldn't drive when taking the amount of painkillers she has taken. I was younger, but I blurted this out when it became obvious she was on something. I told my mom she needs help. She didn't really believe it, then she forgot I went to her about it. My aunt fell asleep at the wheel. Extremely lucky she didn't die, but she was in absolute pain after that. She could no longer go on painkillers, which made things worse. Had to stay in the hospital for depression. Between this, she is the strongest, most empathetic person I know and a huge role model of mine. She unfortunately got sick after this and died at a young age. I wish I raised a louder alarm, but no one wants to listen to a non-adult. One of my friends had bariatric surgery, and when she did a consultation with the plastic surgeon for the skin reduction surgery, he asked what she wanted done with the skin. She replied, I have options, and he told her that she could donate it to that hospital's burn unit if she wanted to. She replied, hey, I won't be using that skin anymore. In the meantime, she was diagnosed with cancer so they couldn't use it, but neither of us had any idea that this was possible. That my old boss didn't walk into a saw. His son accidentally cut his dad's leg off. They were doing work. The saw was in a place it shouldn't have been and the kid sawed into a bush and got the dad's leg. While waiting for the ambulance the dad told his son I walked into it. It was an accident. For months the kid had had guilt then months after that the parents told the son the truth and he had a mental breakdown. I was told this while being fired from an admin position at a motel. That apparently losing my job is an obstacle I can overcome, because look what my husband overcame. And then my boss also told me she'd been recommended for institutionalization three times at least. This whole thing lasted around two hours and I honestly am still reeling. From what I've heard in this small town, other people have said she's a bit dot 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 off. I saw her do things that were really weird but yeah being told that, especially after hearing stuff about payouts from insurance etc. I just had no idea why the hell she was telling me it. CW, sexual assault. My grandpa beat my grandma almost to death several times and most of their 12 kids were conceived through rape. Like grandma would come home from the hospital after just having a baby and sometimes he wouldn't even give her a chance to take her coat off or put the baby down before attacking her. She had to go and get restitched several times. She tried to leave, but her family told her that that's just how marriage is. Grandma got drunk at Easter once and told me and a couple of my female cousins all this, 
but not her own kids. She also said to never trust men and made sure when we got married to give us all pawn-friendly jewelry for if we ever needed an out. Grandma struggled with a lot of addictions over the years and, knowing this, I can kinda see why.